Morning folks. Today we're going to talk about heat pumps and uh, how we wire heat pumps, specifically the mini split ones. So today we're here at a customer's house and we're going to install this, uh, the wiring for this, uh, this uh, Mitsubishi Electric uh, 15,000 BTU. So it requires a 15 amp circuit, double pole, 240 volt. We're gonna put the disconnect in and the whip and uh, show you how we do it. It's quite a simple process. How to wire a new residential construction. So as noted, the first thing we do is take a look at our, uh, our nameplate data to make sure that we're wiring it correctly. So as you can see here, that this is a 230 volt model. Uh, it's a 15,000 BTU. And the voltage, there's the max and the mins. And we're gonna look for max fuse size. So the max fuse size right there is 15 amps. The minimum is 10. So we're gonna run this on a piece of 12 gauge uh, electric heat wire, just cause it's rated for 20 and we're gonna put it on a 15 amp breaker. So the unit is going to sit right here, uh, strapped to the side of the house, and then it's going to run up and go into the uh, the customer's uh, living room, right on the other side of this electrical panel, which is in the basement, which is good for us because it's quick and easy work. So the first thing we need to do is drill a hole uh, right about there. So we're going to go down in the basement and drill a hole out, just because uh, we want to make sure there's no wires in the way. So the first thing we need to do is drill our hole outside. Uh, so we're gonna go up inside this wall cavity here and run a wire out and then back into the electrical panel. So we wanna check around real good to make sure that there's nothing in the way. So here we have some, uh, some uh, caulking in the way. So I think maybe we should get our knife and probably cut that out of there. Just stop the video for a minute. We get a hole cut, we can pull away the insulation up inside the wall here make sure that there's nothing in the sill plate when we go to drill out um, and the sill plate is clear there's no wiring in there so we're going to come out about the same height as the uh, electrical service mask that goes out through so we know we already looked outside and measured that there's nothing out there so we'll bang our hole out through Now that we've got a hole out through, we'll go outside and we'll get the wire geared up and stick the disconnect on. So now what we're going to do is we're going to install a disconnect on the outside, which can uh, turn the breaker, there's a breaker for it that turns off and on to go to the unit. So these are an outside rated disconnect that we use. Uh, they have a breaker that goes right in them and we come out the bottom with our whip. So in the back here, we put a grommet so we can go onto the wire on the side of the house. So we'll screw that on first. This actually gets screwed right to the hose, and then we come out of the bottom with our whip. Make sure we're level here. We'll edit that part. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> on the outside of the house. Uh, Good thing we had long screws. Yep. There we go, I think it's something solid. Okay, so now we're gonna strip that wire and do the connections. Another helpful hint that we do when we're working at these is we just take the top off. Makes it a lot easier to see what's going on inside and we put it on later. It's always a good idea to put a bead of silicone in around that uh, 
Where it comes out through that grommet, just to make sure nothing gets into the house. Now I gotta grab my pliers. No, oh, thank you. So we'll do the ground up on the ground. And the flies are chewing at us today. And then we do our two lines up, 240 volt, red and black, on each lug. Make sure they're good and tight. do the whip. The whip is liquid tight flex that we use. It's rated for outdoor sun resistant. Um, we cut it on the fly and make them up because well they're all a little different when we do different lengths. Uh, so this one here is I guess about three feet. We'll shove our wire through and put our two ends on. We just simply take the wire shove a piece through which will give us enough to get for a connection sometimes it's a little fussy my sidekick there to pull it straight for me and the flies are coming now so what we do is we stick an end on each one of these they're a strain relief connector ready for liquid tight they just twist on And we have a whip. And some whips come with heat pump, heat pumps when you buy them, uh, but we like to make these up ourselves, just because it's a lot easier. And then we know what we're doing, like I mentioned. And then this gets screwed into the bottom of the disconnect. And we do our other side of our connections up. The lock nuts tighten down. And then we'll strip that. Oh, we got a breaker and everything. Look at that. Do these connections up. The reason we don't strip the wire inside the conduit or the liquid tight, we're allowed to go 15 feet by code here before we have to strip it. Anything over that, then we need to look at stripping it. So if we do a 100 foot run around the outside of a house because we can't get through the house, then we have to strip the wire. Being stubborn this morning. I heard it tell it's the beginning of the week. All right, there's that. Now, the breaker that we install uh, has no current rating on it it's just simply on and off and this is for a service disconnect so the service guys can just simply shut it off they need to work at it so we always match our wire colors up on each side so black was up on that side on low online so we're going to do that on our load the bottom of the breaker is the load side make sure that's good and tight And the wiring that communicates between the indoor head and the outdoor head, take note of this black wire here, it's coming from the indoor head. These are the, the HVAC guys that are running this wire. They do the connections between the indoor and the outdoor unit. We just do the power feed. And we do several of them. Sometimes 20 of these a week, depending on what we're doing. A lot of heat pumps. So I'm gonna hang off and put the covers on later because I want to show you with the meter how we check it um, so we're going to move inside take the panel cover off and show you how we put the breaker in for the or show you how we put the breaker in for the inside panel cut it there
So now we're gonna take the panel cover off and put the wire inside the panel, tie the breaker in. This is an Eaton panel, quite a common panel where we're from. Uh, we like these, they're good for installing, have a good trip rating. And easy to work with. Do you have to shut the power off? Nope. That's what I was wondering. I asked the other guys and they said sometimes you have to do it, sometimes they don't. Nope, not at all. So what we're going to do now is stab the wire into the panel. And we need to come through a knockout hole. So we'll just look around in here to see if we can find one that is going to work for us. And I see nothing on the inside of the panel here. Take that knockout out and bring our wire through there. We use a gray plastic connector to bring our wire through. There we go. Now the power inside of these panels is all isolated to the bus bars in the center. So as long as we don't touch those, we're not going to get a shock. Um, but boys, if you touch them, you'd know it. So we'll bring the wire down, stick it right into the panel. You want to come over on this side of me? You can probably see better. Yeah, there we go. Bring it right into the panel. We'll get some straps on that here in a minute. And then we're going to put our breaker in. Now the breaker is uh, Eaton or Cutler Hammer rated, 15 amp. Remember I showed you outside on the side of the unit, it was rated for max breaker, breaker size 15 amp. And this is double pole, so it goes across two poles to get across two bus bars. So inside there, that gives it the 240 volt. Then we'll strip our wire. And I apologize for the darkness, this is just a dark basement. We don't have much light. So we'd be mindful when we strip the wire to look out for other wires around it, but we've done this so many times and it's quite easy for us now. Strip our wire and then we're going to put our grounds in underneath. You want to come up a little closer? We're going to put our grounds in underneath with all the other grounds and then our red and our black wires are going to go here on the side of the breaker. So we'll stick that in there. Tighten it down with our trusty impact gun. The reason I like using an impact gun for tightening the lugs down is you know they're tight. And then we'll strip the wires and put them on the breaker. I'm telling you, I'm breakfast this morning. My guts are growling. You'll see I'm doing this with a pair of linesman pliers um, instead of strippers. You just get used to using linesman pliers after a while and you can learn to strip wire quite easily without damaging it. Um, I have to back these ones off. They're tightened already. Your wire in place. Give a good tighten and a good tug on it to make sure it's not going to come out. You don't want any loose connections because then you get arcing, which arcing is not good. It can cause fire. Give a good tug on it. Then we're going to put the cover back on. So now when we put the cover back on, we need to make two more spots in the cover. Uh, right here on the bottom right hand side so we usually bust these out if you can't do it if we can't do it with our fingers then we'll do it with our pliers 
just pop them out. And then we can put the cover back on. We just line the screws up. Sounds like somebody's falling upstairs. Once you get the screws started, they're a little finicky to go in, but get them in every time. Three in on the other side. And then you need to mark the panel, make sure we always do that, and put a couple straps on that wire there. And then we'll go outside and show you the voltage rating and be pretty much it. December 15th, 1999. Oh, that's an oldie. <laughs> so coming a little closer, you can see the breaker here. Um, right now, I think that's safe to turn on, yeah. Right now, um, we've got to mark this. We'll mark it mini split heat pump living room and then put a couple straps on this wire and uh, and that'll be it. We'll move to outside. You can cut it there. Yep. So now we're going to do a quick meter check on this, again, just to show the voltage with our meter. A pivot point. So the one that's already in. The we're going to go across our two lugs. Turn. So we have two forty-six point five. So basically, now we can stick our covers back on. That's a good point to start measuring from. Because up until then, if you drill down, you drill up, or we've got to redo the hole. Then we have to start all over. There you have it. So are you pretty One wired mini split heat pump. Sounds good. Uh, I'll go get my. So, folks, we're a little bit ahead of uh, ahead of the, uh, the heat pump installers, uh, but we showed you how we wire our heat pumps. So, don't forget to like and subscribe, and we'll see you on the next video.